I heard that once uh, uh, Kuba Achan, when he was asked about five kilesas, he was saying uh, you should not fight the kilesas because for fighting the kilesas you need a weapon and you don't have samadhi now. When you don't have samadhi you have nothing where you can fight the kilesas with. You know, because when you have samadhi then you're getting this ease and, and pleasure and then it's not easy, and then it's easy to, you know, to handle the kilesas if you don't need. But if you don't have this, you know, then the kilesas are the only pleasure you, you get, maybe, you know. Then what what you're fighting, you know, in this sense. Yeah, but what, 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 then how does that kind of talk affect you? You know, then you, you feel you've got to get some money. <laughs> <laughs> At least I do, you know, then Kubada says that. It's not wrong, you know. And then, you know, if I feel I'm someone whose samadhi isn't good enough to fight the kilesas, I'm just all the creation of the self, you know. So, like, like you, you have this, you know, which comes first, samadhi or panya, or panya or samadhi? And and uh, and, and people are different. So some some people are good at samadhi and others are. Like, like I found, I, because I, you know, I found I can reflect on things, and then, and where I was always trying to get samadhi out of ignorance, you know, me trying to get jhanas, and so I, there was always this, this kind of intense desire to get something, and, uh, and then when, you know, sometimes I'd get these high states, but then they drop away, and then I, but it was still ignorance operating in the mind. And uh, where I found my personal experience was just reflecting on suffering, the noble truths, because I could do this. Because at first, you know, I was in a situation where I had, you know, this very confusing situation to be in. And and uh, and I and I, you know, and then you're you're, you're going all the time doing doing these various chores, and and the samadhi I could get depended on controlling everything, you know, like sensory deprivation or lack of stimulation of the senses, and so I and, and that's what I wasn't getting there, and what about home, but. Um, the uh, you know you're always doing something and then um, uh, so I couldn't figure out you know how you know I thought I had to get away to get the samadhi first but then I began to figure it out you know how what I'm doing and then also how we translate that word samadhi is like an attainment. Or is it just natural? You need to look open. You know, because it's like samatha is, is where you you focus on one thing and 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 shut everything out. And then then uh, with the pasana it's more like you're using uh, Sama Samadhi, which is opening, so the the one thing becomes the whole, you know, the the whole moment, not the the object, the one object that that you focus on and reject everything else. And that's that's more like the intuitive practice. So I mean, people have criticized me because they think, you know, I'm that you've got to get the samadhi first and to do the other. But, but if you're, but, you know, I, Ajahn Chan didn't teach that to me. And this is what I, this is what I picked up from Lung Cha. And it works for me. And then, like, some of you say, well, you've got to get samadhi first. 
and before you can, because they think that Ajahn Sumedho has a high level of samadhi already, so he can do this. <laughs> and so, you know, you can kind of idolize me, you know, thinking I'm speaking from a very high place, uh, and, and I've got this wonderful samadhi, so I can, I can really, you know, know the Four Noble Truths in three aspects and so forth. But, uh, it's not like that. It's not that, you know, I, what, what I have, the ability, is, is awareness and that it has, has developed. And the, uh, and the samadhi then is from, from that, it, you know, is it one pointed on an object or one on the whole? And, and so this is like, is, uh, you know, the, the point that excludes everything or the point that includes. You know, so you, there's this, you know, one can mean everything, whole, or one can mean one object. Mm. And, and so like the some of the friends use it like point at the one object that excludes, and then you get a, a kind of samadhi from that, or the one, the whole, the samadhi, which is awareness of the whole in the present moment, which isn't exclusive, is everything, that's it, you know, good, bad, right, wrong, but it, it's the whole rather than the object that you're, you're aware of. And, and, and this is what intuition allows us to do, where, where the, uh, you know, the objects of concentration for some of time are, you know, until you get into uh, the immeasurable, like space consciousness, nothingness, and, the, and neither perception, non perception. But then we tend to elevate these to high levels of concentration. You know, so then you get first John, second, third, fourth John, then you go into space consciousness, nothingness, and neither perception, not. That's the, the thinking mind that tends to, to, you know, you can only have one thought in one moment. You can't think two thoughts at the same moment. Mm -hmm. Thinking is like that, you can't, you know, you can't think two thoughts in the same moment. You've got to this thought <laughs> and that thought. But it, with intuitive awareness, you're, you're, you're aware of thinking. You know, you know, so it includes thinking, but it's not thinking, it's awareness of thinking. And so this, uh, and this gives you this, this broad spectrum, where, where when you're caught in one thing, and then, because some cars are like that, you can you go from one to the next. And, and, and and if they follow in tandem, you know, you have A, B, C, D, you have G, H, I, J, K, L, M, L, P, Q, R, S, And you can't have A and B at the same moment. You can't think A and B at the same thought moment. Bah. It's common sense, isn't it? But, it, but it, you know, when you... When you with awareness, then a, the whole alphabet can appear in your consciousness. And these are, it, it includes, and, and the, the, the thinking, the emotion, of the body, the breathing, the, the uh, memory, whatever is present now. And so, like, I didn't show, I remember at Hampstead, when we first went to England, in Hampstead, in London, uh, one day, a lot of kind of hippies uh, came to the Vihara, and they were asking Ajahn Chah questions, and, and he was talking about Panya and mindfulness to these uh, kind of... Uh, 
degenerate looking hippies hmm. and there were some Thai people there and the they and when the hippies left they said why are you teaching Panya to these people they don't you know they're, they're not moral they have no sila and uh, why are you teaching that to them uh, and uh, and and his reply was they're not interested in sila so I'm teaching them what they're interested in. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I eventually get to Sila, you know, so, you know, you, you've got to have Sila, Donna Sila Pana, you've got to have Sila Samadhi Panya. That's how the thinking mind works, you know, in, in this first and second, third. But, but, what I was saying, look, you know, you, 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 you've got to meet people where they're at. If you're teaching Sila to somebody who, who doesn't have any any perception of that, but they're interested in Panya, then you you approach from where they're at, and then the, the thing will will come together. Where the kind of purist will think, you're not I'm not gonna teach any of these hippies until they keep the five precepts. <laughs> I know people, the monks that do that, you know, I'm not going to teach them anything until they. But, uh. Well, was uh, an example of teaching from Panya and not see it, and not see it. I, don't, I don't know who it was, but there was a nun, I don't know if it was Chinese or Tibetan. But she got raped by, and she was apparently quite quite a tame. But she got raped by three three men, and uh, she apparently was able to keep equanimity through the whole thing. But as soon as the rape stopped, she started giving them a dhamma teaching to the point that they realised it was something quite special, and uh, regret came up in the mind, and they ended up becoming her students. <laughs> so I mean, the secret definitely wasn't there, but the punya actually inspired them to uh, mm-hmm. poor stuff. Because you. Like with intuitive awareness, you're reaching, you know, it, it's because we share the same consciousness. It's the same for all of us, consciousness. And, and when you speak from that empty space, then, then you're, you know, you're, it's not just language anymore. It's coming, you know, from, from pure wisdom, rather, and that can, that can affect people in a way that, they don't even understand. It, it, it awakens people. It's not, you know, where if you're just being moralistic and saying, you know, you shouldn't, I'll never forgive you for raping me. And we understand that. <laughs> and, and seeking revenge, I understand revenge, and, and so forth. It's not something out of my uh, experience of life, but, but, but also, it, you're just, you know, by, by operating always from this, this kind of judgmental position, uh, you're just um, enforcing the, the uh, fears and self of the ego, you know, like if, you know, if you, you say, you know, uh, you're a rapist, you're a bad man, you're... then that reinforces already that person's sense of being that type of person. You see, from what you say, she is able to come from a wisdom level that could reach them in a different, you know, that wasn't reinforcing their already, their, their evil tendency, but, and maybe putting them in perspective for them, and, See, you know, where they could actually see the bad result of doing those kind of things. When you think, when you contemplate, you know, that we're all connected. All creation is connected to consciousness. It's a different way of looking at life than this, uh, this sense of you know, separate individual consciousness. Because even the 
ants or the mosquitoes or the you know everything's in the trees everything is is part of this his whole is complete in this realm it's all the forms the shapes the the you know we have different like uh, interesting like form like the human form you have a Buddha Rupa you have a human form for Buddha Rupa uh, the human form is a you know has it this this is where this Buddha ability this ability to awaken to reality to ultimate reality is possible within the human form and includes all human beings. And then, uh, and then the dog has dog's form. And so, even though the consciousness is the same, they have, they always act like dogs, not like humans. And I don't think dogs are, are reflective like they have the, you know, the ability to observe themselves. Uh, and, um, same with mosquitoes or you know every oh, life is like this the forms and space the nama rupa and then the then the uh, and consciousness includes nama rupa and and rupa is determines the species why do why why do birds migrate to south africa from northern canada when they they have no, 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 one of those machines you have now to direct you? GPS. <laughs> <laughs> How do they know, you know, where South Africa is? And it's a part of the, 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 the species, the form, the karma of that species. It's, it's innate in the, in the, in their genetic system. And so it, you know, it, it operates. Say, why do seals and whales act like that, or monkeys, or you know, all these different creatures, fish and whatnot? Because the forms are different. Consciousness is is the same. So, so then, uh, like the, you know, I used to uh, uh, in England. You know, people would want me to uh, sprinkle holy water on. Them. And, and Rinpo Cha never really liked that practice here. But in England, of course, the Thais like it. And, and also, English people like it. So, and, and so I started doing it. And of course, I did it just kind of like, uh, I'll do it, you know, because, you know, it, people seem to appreciate it. And so I was, I was doing it, it just out of a sense of, kindness and duty but I didn't have any feeling for it and sometimes you know I didn't want to be bothered but then as I started contemplating it like it, I was contemplating like you're melting this candle of wax into the water you're chanting uh, Pali and so you got the fire and the wax the water, the air, the elements and you're chanting these Pali scriptures, Pali suttas, uh, and then, uh, and then this, and then, and then, if I'm just in a state of, if I'm doing this just perfunctorily, like, you're supposed to have wax in the water and get it over with, chant the scripture and sprinkle it, is one way. <laughs> or, you know, then I realize, if I empty my mind, of thinking and view is just the jitwan. So I tune into that and then melt this wax into the water and, and I can chant all at the same time. And then I feel, you know, that it's somehow opening the people that are being blessed with this water is, you know, you're reaching it, it's a ceremony and what they, how they receive is something up to them. But, but from this point, where I'm actually performing the ceremony, then I can do this in, in emptiness, and then it's a, a real blessing. Because at that moment, 
there's, it's not a personal thing. It's not just a thing you're doing because you feel you have to. You see, so you're actually tuning in. You know, it gives you opportunity in ceremony like that to kind of go in this emptiness. You're 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 including the consciousness is inclusive unity rather than than a separative divisive. And the, you know, then I can enjoy doing it because it, it it's coming. Kind of you know, you realize it's it's a skill. It's not just one of those things you have to do as a monk. And and then you think it's it's better to do things like that than just chit chat, and gossip about you know the English weather or the how awful the government is. <laughs> You see what I mean? It's it's really a different way of of look like it's consciousness that includes everything, other than this. Because we're our problems are all from the total belief, and we're separate individuals, kind of on a permanent basis. And so we always there's always this fear and and self consciousness and anxiety around us because. This separateness it creates this uh, tension of fear, and if you, you know, so fear is, is, um, you know, this realm is a realm of fear. Actually, it's about survival, and we're all going to die, uh, these forms are all going to die anyway. So we fear of death. So what? What do we do? You know, how can we resolve all this within uh, within these kind of forms? And this is where the, uh, the Buddhist teaching is is the one that really helps us to to get to that to recognize that point where we transcend birth and death. We're outside that through this awareness. So it's not like the deathless realm. Amarvatya named the monastery in England, deathless realm. Because in the 80s there was so much fear of the war. And nobody ever talked about deathlessness. They talked about dying in the nuclear holocaust and things like that. But, you know, so they're, they're kind of horrid images of dying. You know. but, the deathlessness was not part of the, the, you know, nobody understood that and, and didn't even know what it meant. But, you know, I thought, what I can do is just plant the seed in, in their minds, you know, uh, present a, an opportunity and to uh, plant the seed. So even the, the name was chosen because of, I could see I wanted that to, you know, it's a, it's a kind of beautiful word in itself, but also it it has its resonance in people's consciousness. Even though, you know, they don't understand what that is. It's the suggestion of that. That's what you want. You don't want to have, you know, you're planting the suggestion of like a seed. And then whether it grows in a, into a you know a beautiful flower or not something else, but at least I've planted the seed. But also, like like in in uh, the summer of life, like uh, I found uh, the gratitude and contentment enough samadhi. It, it, it like it's a because it isn't personal. It's not based on ego. It, it uh, you know like the contentment with the requisites and and uh, gratitude 
then in the samana, you know, you have a level of samadhi that comes through that. Where if there's always uh, discontentment, desire to get something you don't have, then you never have contentment. So if you're always trying to get samadhi, you know, then you're not going to be content unless you get what you want. But but with the with the uh, and then you're not content because you can't keep it. You know, so it, you have to always keep trying to get it back, and then and then uh, and oftentimes they come, you know, through not through wisdom but through desire, and and that's so untrustworthy. Where where the Buddha established this in in this way to to uh, create this sense of like a samana, whatever, depending on the kindness of others for survival. That's, that's putting yourself out on a limb, isn't it? I mean, you're, you know, you're, you know, giving up your right. We have our right to have money. It's our right to hold money and and have an active sex life and to, you know, it's our right to 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 be, not live under these all these vinay stuff, but to assert ourselves, be free, and go where we want, not always have to you know, ask permission or do this or that, you know, it's our right, human rights. And so this is, <laughs> and then we give all that up to live in this way, you know, where you give up your rights and you have these duties to perform, you know, so you've got the Vinaya duty, junior, senior, senior, junior, and then, uh, but that makes that makes life simple because uh, you know we're if we're just asserting our rights all the time, we're never going to be content. You know, we're never going to be happy because we're always thinking about ourselves. And if somebody doesn't, you know, kind of stops us or challenges us, we we, we have to assert ourselves and show them, you know, who's show them my rights and try to conquer them, maybe. That's, it doesn't mean the gratitude or contentment. That's not a foundation. It's just for misery. It's a foundation for suffering. So, this 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 one, like the, the Samana life, is, is based on, like, contentment with little. So you've got four requisites. And on Dhamma, or the, and, and Vinaya. So Vinaya is is a structured agreement of behavior uh, for us, which is based on duties to each other, and it's and it's based on you know not on on it's based on seniority, not on social status. So you know you know you know you know it's a very you know, you come into the sangha. You're not even if you're the king of Thailand. You, your your status is your junior junior monk to maybe the same writer who's uh, you know from Isan village. <laughs> but it it uh, it you know. So it's it's not about. And who's highly attained in the witness about just just a totally impersonal structure um, who's been in who's been ordained longer or who was ordained first it's an impersonal isn't it? and then if, you know who this monk is in our heart this one is, he's only been a monk one year but this this monk 30 years and he's still you know Putuchina, not nowhere, nowhere. That's, you know, that's, and so I'm going to bow to the, the one year Arahant, or to the 30 year Putuchina. <laughs> it's, it's not a choice, is it? It's, it's you just, you bow to the, the senior one. So in, this makes life easy. It's not about personal feelings mm -hmm. towards people, and it's structured. Impersonal structure. 
and, and that makes makes our life easy. It's not, you know, we don't have to just follow our particular likes and dislikes towards uh, the monks in the sangha. And then this 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 structure then creates a sense of like you contemplate the Buddha and you know like like Ajahn Chah teachers that you you that have helped you, you have know, a sense of content you got to wait tea and the contentment. This gives you foundation for samadhi. But trying to get samadhi I'm not found it for me. I can't, I can't. It doesn't work trying to get it because it, it from the desire realm. Now in Thailand, where you've got a lot of faith in the teacher, and you're you're kind of culturally Buddhist, you know I think samadhi is easier for them because they they tend to not question or doubt the teacher and the teacher says do this and then do that and, and you do it but for most of us you know the, we don't have that if the teacher says do this first and why <laughs> <laughs> and this other teacher told me to do it another way and I, I'm not sure about it. <laughs> and he great doubt which he teach out and that and for Jonas which he teach is the, you know the one that destroys the concentration you know it's a, it, and when we're you know most of us are are critical doubters so and but it so if, you know, the, the teacher tells us what to do, we still doubt. And and we doubt ourselves, we doubt our ability to do it, you know, if we don't get what we think we should. So it's, a, you know, it, 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 that's a bit like the, the, the faith structure or the panya, chaito vimuti, panya vimuti. And, and you don't have to whip the killings, you just recognize them. They're, they're sankaras like any other. They rise in the relationship to them. And then that level of gratitude and contentment give you a much more sense of being able to bear with the, the presence of killings to allow them to cease rather than as soon as they arrive, you want to get rid of them. But the, the, the actual structure of behavior is based on uh, doing good, refraining from doing bad. So, you're, you know, we're, we're going to have both impulses to do good and bad, but, and, and they're, both, they're all sankaras. You know, so they teach you bad sankaras teach you about sankaras as the good ones do but in terms of uh, action and speech then we our active side is to do good and passive side to refrain from doing the bad ones <laughs> but the attention includes both you know the samasati includes both the good and the bad and then you can discern and then you you have the insight to act, you know, if, you, if you're going to act on the good ones, it's coming from wisdom rather than from personal identity or personal desire. And refraining from bad ones isn't guilty because you have bad sankaras in your mind, it's just recognizing they are what they are, they're sankaras. And then the doing good and reframing doing that makes our life one that is beneficial to, you know, makes for a good life, happy life and 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 one that benefits the society, you know, we're creating 
you know, our presence in the society is, is benefiting the society.